As Sufa Institute is a Birmingham-based organization committed to serving a contemporary society through the application of traditional Islamic knowledge. As Sufa Institute has been providing invaluable services for the homeless over the last three years. To date, they have provided over 60,000 meals for the needy in Birmingham city centre. As Sufa believes that providing for the homeless is not just a moral responsibility as a citizen, but it fulfills the obligation of following the footsteps of the beloved Prophet on the 28th of November, six Muslims from the Homeless Outreach Team decided to embark upon a challenge of a lifetime, to sleep rough for two nights in the city of Birmingham. They brought with them only a simple sleeping bag and the clothes on their backs. This documentary will describe the journey through their eyes, reenacting the reality of thousands of men and women across the UK who are forced to sleep on the streets every night. Alaikum. Wa alaikum as This is the very beginning of our journey. Wa alaikum as-salam. Here's brother Latif, the group. My brother Tik. Finding our way now. Inshallah. Where are we heading, lads? We're going uh, back we're gonna to go to the... Zainab um, Demagadeh. Yeah, to the arch. Back to the, the arch. He's going to stay with us for an hour. And then we'll head into town. <laughs> We haven't got many options, have we? No, we, we haven't got a lot of options, so you know, we're still trying to find somewhere. We found somewhere, but you know, it, it's... Uh, the rain started. Yeah, the rain and the wind blowing in is, uh, is a hazard. This is the spot we picked. MashaAllah, Amir Sahib decided, as you can see, it's not the clean. It has all the uh, bird droppings, but this is... Uh, what people have, brothers are getting some cardboard out, alhamdulillah, which is out, and uh, this is going to be it, just here. It's practically one o'clock now, we've been out in the streets for the part of three, four hours, probably a little bit longer. It's taken us absolutely ages to find a spot that's decent. It definitely changed my perspective on the way I perceive people who sleep off. People who don't have homes. Coming from an Asian community, coming from a Pakistani background, we have the safety net of our families. There was a chap that we talked to earlier on, Dino. He has no family. Where is his safety net? Last week I came across an individual who got shot for seven days. I find it difficult to get through a day without showering. And it wasn't at the fact that he didn't want to shower, he wanted to shower, but he had no place to go. It was kind of cold, but alhamdulillah, it was all right. Managed. Yeah, God, God helps up. Uh, it's a different experience, you know, slipping out rough. Um, it, it, it takes getting used to. It's not something you can get used to in one night or two nights. Uh, it's totally different. Uh, lack of security. Uh, not knowing when uh, you're gonna get your food uh, the next day, the next hour. You know, we, we're trying to get breakfast now. We haven't even thought about lunch. So it's um, it, it's short-term survival strategy when you are on the streets. Uh, well, what's the what's the next plan for today? Today, um, it's gonna start begging. Mm. Inshallah, see if the public can help us. Inshallah. And just so we can clarify, right? You guys haven't got anything else? No, no money. At all. Mm. Nothing. Uh, the begging hut isn't really going too well at the moment. I've uh, been here for about an hour and a half. And uh, not a penny yet. People just walking by, not even giving a second look. It's as if I, I do not exist. Um, it's one of the main problems that un uh, homeless people face because people don't want to acknowledge that they exist. And if they don't exist, then they don't need help. Basically, it's, um, it's a denial mechanism. 
two people have walked past. One lady, she just called us tramps. So he upset me a bit, so I straight away said to him, we're not tramps, we're doing an experiment to see how homeless people get treated. And then she, she started laughing and you know she felt to be silly, silly about it. And it's a shame because then the second person walked past and they say, ah, oh, don't you hate it when you see people like this sitting, uh, sitting on the streets? And you know, to, to, you know, Okay, you know, people ask who and that, but at the end of the day, what are they doing to you? If you're not going to give them, don't, you shouldn't give them abuse. You know, it's not a nice feeling, not just sitting here, it makes you feel really, really low. We, all the brothers here, we're trying to understand um, how hard it is you know, to be homeless and to live off the street. So, if you can just give us a, a brief glimpse into what life on the street is like. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. The main reason I'm not housed, by the way, because people don't understand why there's a pregnant homeless girl. It's because I don't three hours into pictures from like 2006. That's the only reason no one can house me, and I've been like really good until recently. So does so, that mean none of the housing associations will help you? No, not even city council. That means you're consigned to living street, on the street? Street, definitely. Even though I'm pregnant, oh, they're still leaving me out here. And how, how have you been managing food, clothing? I still want food. Okay, well, I think they let me do it because I do it daily. And it's so blatant. They, you know what I mean? I just walk in and eat out, so I think they kind of let me do that anyway. But I eat from and then I just walk around. Have you, do, you, do you not have a family network that you can fall back onto? Where, where would you suggest that we sleep tonight then? Well, if you want somewhere warm to sleep, this is a good place to sleep. But personally, I don't like it because it's too public. It's too open. Yeah. You get too many people walking past here. You get some idiots from Broad yeah. Street and all of that walk past here and that walk past. So me personally, I sleep underneath here. Okay. We just spoke to a few homeless people. After hearing the story, is really sad. And to see, you know, even when people are trying to sleep outside, they've got enough problem of people messing around with them, hitting them. You know, it's not on. You know, we, 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 as, as a community, we do need to do something about this. The reality that these people have to go through. And again, this is another spot, as you can see. The, debris from the leftovers from someone's sleeping. And this is reality. This is what these people have to go through on a daily basis. We're here just doing it on a weekend. And this is daily life for people like Rachel and Dino yeah. you know, that we saw early on. How much, you know, just a simple thing like a pillow, like security, you know, going to your fridge, picking something out, you know, we take it all for granted. But you have to, you have to come out like this and see people ignore you, they don't even recognize you. You know, you can't even go up to somebody even to talk to them about homeless people. Never mind, ask them for more. What happened, what happened in the, what's the name? Basically, we, we, we tried to walk up to a few men and our lady, as soon as Brother Latif tried to talk to him, and she starts saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, mm, too busy, busy and, they, and, they, and they walked off. And this is, this is the kind of, you know, response we're getting from a lot of people. And we're still dressed half decent. I, I, I hope we don't smile or mm. nothing. But, you know, you can imagine if a homeless person who, who, who's not smiling too good, you know, goes up to people. You know, it's, 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 it's disgusting how, you know, you know, there's no respect for human life. It, uh, it, it's been really, really uh, a wonderful experience. Uh, the fact that uh, there are a lot of people who are willing to help. You know, we tell them what we're doing, and uh, you find that most of these people would help homeless people anyway. And then when they find out what, what we're doing, they, they really, really, you know, you can feel the warmth of their hearts and, you know, how they helped us. It's, uh, it's amazing. We saw one, we saw one person uh, who must have gone up to 15 people to have so many, and one man gave um, him, I think, a couple of quid out of 15 people. Yeah. And it loses you, and you lose your self-respect, your dignity, when you're going out and asking these people for money. And it's not nice. I mean, I I try asking one person for like, 50 pence, and I find it very very hard to go and ask him. I believe we're on the last leg of this uh, two-day exercise. 
and in a way that's given us a, a bit of a boost because we can see the finish line. <laughs> we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. But for a lot of the people out there uh, who are actually living rough, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no finish line. Uh, it's just one nightmarish day rolling into the other for them. Uh, no sight of hope, no sight of help, uh, and the uncertainty just continues. <laughs>